Since the beginning of time, there has always been a chain of command, a pecking order, a hierarchy. A pressure from equals has seen the enchantment of the majority. As the game for power becomes an evolving playing field, so do the methods. Our culture has become ever increasingly conjoined to the hip of technology and has no plans of separation. Seeing this as a 20 year old growing up during the rapid proliferation of mobile phones, killer apps and celebrity culture, I want to explore the real truth behind the issues surrounding the mental health malaise that follows it. My name is Lewis Davis and this is the Heads Down Generation. To get a full, diverse answer, I will be asking the citizens of the birthplace of the first computer, Manchester. Lawrence Jones, MBE, the CEO of 18-year-old forward-thinking cybersecurity giant UK Fast, has been a tie of one of Manchester's digital leaders. Over the last 18 years, I can't even begin to explain just how much technology has changed in both the computer industry, uh, the now cloud, but also in telephony. Everything connected with the internet, it's incredible. With, with the explosion of social media uh, and, and the way we're using our phones nowadays, the lines are very blurred between our personal lives, our home lives, work lives, school work. It's, it's incredible how it's, it's almost captivated every aspect of, of what we do. Where social media can help is it's a great tool to amplify news. So once you've got content like this or opinions where people can actually make a, a statement and hopefully help people, then you use your social media platforms to amplify and, and spread the message. But whose messages are we hearing the most? Me? You? No. The major influences of our generation is the celebrity. A person come brand whose popularity is deemed by likes and followers on the free-for-all cyber community we call social media. Natalie Balmain, a rising YouTube advocate for type 1 diabetics and owner of type 1 clothing, highlights just exactly why social media and celebrity culture go hand in hand as a money making machine. Since commercialisation, people have wanted a car as good as their neighbours, but social media has really kind of, um, it's taken that concept and been very cynical with it, where, you know, we've got to a point now where all industry knows that they only have to put one celebrity in one thing and make them look happy to sell that idea of happiness to you. And I'm saying it's selling happiness because that's essentially what it is. The, the products are just a mask for, for selling you a life that you think you want. Anthropological studies show that the desire to fuse, merge or identify with someone else has been implicit since the beginning of mankind. This idea has came from the search for oneness, unity with the cosmos, gods, the stars. This human behaviour has been rudimentary and primitive towards the creation of religion. Mustasin, a devout Muslim, offered his viewpoint on why people are so desiring of others. Human beings are social creatures, we imitate what other human beings do. So for example, let's say Justin Bieber, we'll see people wearing Justin Bieber caps, Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber shirts, or even singing his lyrics. So human beings like therefore they imitate, they follow these, they look up to these celebrities as their, I would say, God. In 2003, the term celebrity worship syndrome first appeared in an article, Do You Worship the Celebs? by James Chapman in the Daily Mail. CWS has been described as an obsessive addictive disorder where an individual becomes overly involved and interested or completely obsessed with the details of the personal life of a celebrity. Chung and Yu carried out further analysis on the correlation between addiction and celebrity worship and four different types of worship were discovered. 1. Entertainment Social 2. Intense Personal 3. Borderline pathological. Four, deleterious imitation. This form of celebrity worship allows us to form reason behind an audience's need to copy promiscuous and morally unrestrained behavior performed by idols. This form of worship can range from concentrated to discreetly diluted forms, which is becoming a frequent and very normal thing to replicate in this modern day. It was found that music and modelling celebrities caused an extremely high rate in deleterious imitation within their fans. With 39 out of the 100 young people I surveyed saying that their favourite type of music was rap, hip-hop or grime, 
It affirms that USA's most popular genre according to the Forbes magazine is rubbing off on the UK. With hip pop stars such as Drake, Jay-Z and Kendrick Lamar, no wonder that is the only field that is growing noticeably. Even when I look at rap, I just think nowadays, girls, 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 that is literally it, or drugs and girls and money, designer, everything has to be that way, but. Rap isn't even genuine rap anymore. It's like, there's no lyrics. It's just, they're just mumbling over like these, you know, beats because they're just high on drugs. So it's like, the love of artistry is not the same anymore. Pharmaceutical drugs have seen a dramatic rise in recent years with direct correlation to the lyrical use in rap songs, highlighting that the drug is more a hedonistic outlet rather than a medical savior. This glorification of pharmaceutical and illegal street drugs has turned America into an opioid addicted nation. With the addiction rate of opiates in Americans under the age of 25 climbing nearly sixfold between 2001 and 2014, Trump says more has to be done. However, 90% of the drug addicted youth in America get no treatment at all. The recent death of 21 year old Lil Peep has now brought the widespread issue into the public eye. That was a crazy one because his last few videos online was him popping pills before he died, but he had a good career ahead of him. And But it's a 50-50 story with that because he was clever, he, he studied and he got his um, qualifications, he'd become an artist in his bedroom, but he went down the wrong road and started rapping negative about being depressed and he went down the road that ended up taking his own life. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, six out of 10 substance abusers also have a mental disorder. Subsequently, 57 out of the 100 people I surveyed said they either strongly agreed or agreed that their favorite music genre affected their lifestyle choices. Grime, UK's answer to hip hop, has created a movement which has imitated common themes present in US rap, drugs, violence, designer brands, and derogatory depictions of women. Women are not only depicted as less than human, but are expected to be promiscuous and submissive, succumbing to sexual demands, drug taking, and unrealistic expectations in terms of how to dress and look, adding to a patriarchal paradise which undermines our sisters and mothers equal potential. The survey I carried out on 100 young people found that 44% agreed that there was an extreme amount of pressure on females in terms of body image and a further 51% said that they strongly agreed. Which presents the question, who are some of these perfect females that these rappers are talking about and to what extent are they further fueling this pressure around female body image? I'd say the biggest influence is especially on body image and makeup from, for females would be the Kardashians. Um, I think they've just, they've built up a following based on having things that most girls want, essentially. I think they're massive. Like, I think the first thing that comes to mind, you know, when you like mention social media, like Kylie Jenner, um, yeah, they're massive. The Kardashian family, huge, huge. Like, everybody wants to be like, you know, every member in the family, like, um, so they definitely have a huge, huge, huge impact. He was Kim married to. Exactly. And he's not only in fashion, he's in music as well. So they both relate, don't they? With 95 out of the 100 surveyed stating that Kim and Kylie were the most influential female figures online, these Instagram and runway model sisters have amounted a staggering total of 436 million Instagram followers. The relationships held between these highly influential women and some of the most popular, fashionable, however condescending rappers have generated an ignorant cultural following which is buying into the gender values they share as a whole and the brands they wear as a symbol of their social dominance and aura of perfection. But how has this amplified ignorance fared for the young minds of this generation with the presence of the always on connective device and the symbiotic killer apps that come with it? The impact is felt most by young women, with almost double the amount of suicide rates since the last decade. The MHF have put this down to a pursuit for perfectionism in this digital world. With this search for perfection, Sky News reported that nearly half of girls have tried to lose weight by the age of 17, and a third of boys have felt under pressure to be muscly. Not only did 40% agree that the reason they felt the pressure was due to social media, 
but a further 24% said celebrities were an even bigger influence on their lives. There's like um, an unrealistic standard that you sort of feel like you need to be, um, but that's only like when you influence the social media because you don't necessarily get like an honest sort of depiction of someone's life. We tend to put celebrities on this high pedestal as if they're not human, as if they're just like this higher being. <laughs> That's a part, we all want to be a, be a god. There's a, there's a part of us that, that, that wants that kind of exaltation. But it's the opposite of connection, isn't it? It is, it's total disconnect, and it's a culture of disconnect. With 80% of young people internationally having access to a mobile phone, this has created a level of worldwide dependency on the need to connect and compare. The societal pressure as a whole has seen an influx in mental health issues in the youth of this generation. Something needs to change, but how can we do as such in a digitally dominated world? If you're suffering from mental health issues, then it's absolutely imperative you share them. There's a saying, a problem shared is a problem halved. I'm a great believer in that. I've suffered when, when people have laid into me on, on social media and I'm perceived as a successful business person, but I'm just a human being. I've got a family, I've got feelings, and it can be quite painful. But I have my wife, I have my friends, and they tell me, don't worry about these sorts of things. And, and it does help. Having somebody there is, is very, very important. It's great that you can listen to them. We're all, um, we're all like, like containers at the end of the day. There's only so much that we can take. Eventually, a little bit like a pressure cooker, eventually we'll blow. So by having somebody to talk to, it releases the valve and lets, lets the, the, the negative out. So I'm a great believer in sharing and talking. We need to accept that our bodies are solely a survival mechanism and not a canvas for society to alter in their twisted perception. We need to realise that our mouths are made for talking and our ears are made for listening so that our generation can hold out a hand during times of need. We should take messages from celebrities with a pinch of our own salt so that we don't become a misled soul in the search for perfection. We need to love ourselves and what we stand for. We are the future. We are will what define the world in years to come. We need to understand that we are unique. We are fruitful. We are perfect already. We are the lights of life. So instead of looking down, look up and reach beyond the stars.